Welcome to today's lesson on the Earth's magnetic field. We will investigate the discovery of the compass and learn some interesting things about the Earth's magnetic field. A legend is told of how an ancient Greek shepherd called Magnus found that the nails in his shoes got firmly stuck to a particular type of dark rock. These stones were called magnetite because the region of Greece in which they were discovered was called Magnesia. At first it was believed that these stones were just mythical objects with magical powers that should only be used by sorcerers and fortune tellers. But then, about a thousand years later, people made another discovery about these unusual rocks. They found that when a piece of this rock was suspended in air on the end of a piece of string, it turned around until it faced in a particular direction. The astonishing thing was that every piece of magnetite that they suspended in this way always turned to the same direction. These rocks were now called leading stones and this term soon got shortened to lodestone. Can you think what this lodestone could be used for? Of course, lodestone could be very useful to determine direction. Before the use of lodestones, most sailors and explorers relied on the sun and stars for navigation. The problem with this method was that on a stormy day or cloudy night, they could not work out where they were going and so got completely lost. Although the Greeks had discovered lodestone and later the Chinese had invented a simple compass, no one really understood why a compass always points in a north-south direction. Only after more investigation did people begin to understand the principles of a compass better. Let's join Diasha as we look into this matter of compasses. William Gilbert was the first person to compare the Earth to a bar magnet. He showed that there is a magnetic force field around a magnet and suggested that there must be a similar magnetic force field around the Earth. So what is this magnetic force field like? To understand the Earth's magnetic field, we must remember what the magnetic field around a bar magnet is like. Firstly, this force field occupies a region in space all around the magnet. The magnetic force field is a three-dimensional force field. And we must remember that the force field is at its strongest at the ends of the magnet, or the poles as we call them. It was this magnetic field around a magnet that made William Gilbert think that there must be some similarities between a bar magnet and the Earth. He suggested that the Earth could be compared to a giant bar magnet. He argued that there must be a strong magnetic field surrounding the Earth. When a free-moving magnet is placed inside the Earth's magnetic field, this magnet will experience a force and align itself with the Earth's magnetic field. But before we compare the Earth's magnetic field to the properties of a bar magnet, we will have to clarify a few terms. The words north and south are used to describe two things. Firstly, these are names given to direction. Geographically, the Earth is divided into two hemispheres by the equator. The northern hemisphere contains all the lines of latitude between the equator and 90 degrees north, and the southern hemisphere contains all the lines of latitude from the equator to 90 degrees south. But the words north and south are also used to describe the nature of a magnetic pole. The one end of a magnet is called the North Pole and the other the South Pole. The reason the opposite ends of magnets were named like this is because the North Pole of a free-moving magnet always points to geographic north. The second word that can also be confusing is the word pole. We have called the region where the magnetic field is the strongest a pole. But the Earth also has two geographic poles. These are points at the extreme north and south ends of the Earth. The imaginary line that joins these two points is called the Earth's axis. The Earth rotates around this axis once every 24 hours. 
The geographical point found at latitude 90 degrees north is called the North Pole, and the point at 90 degrees south is called the South Pole. We will investigate three properties of the Earth's magnetic field. This gets quite complex. Firstly, we find the direction of the field. Secondly, we will establish the position of the magnetic poles. And lastly, clarify the shape of the field. We can use a compass at any point on the Earth's surface to find the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. The direction is clearly from the geographic south towards the geographic north. Does this mean that the Earth's magnetic field is different from a bar magnet's? To answer this question, we must remember that a compass needle gives the direction of the magnetic field around the bar magnet, but it also can give the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. What this means is that there is a difference in geographic and magnetic north and south. The type of magnetic pole at the geographic north of the Earth is actually a magnetic south. And at the geographic south down here, we have a magnetic north. Now that we recognize that there is a difference in geographic north and magnetic north, Let's see if there's a difference in the position of the geographic and magnetic poles. Can you think of a way to find one of the magnetic poles using a free-moving bar magnet? Let me give you a hint. Have a look at the field lines around a bar magnet again. Do you see that the field lines at this magnetic south are pointing straight down into the Earth? If you were to stand at the magnetic south or north pole, your bar magnet would dip vertically downwards. Scientists can take measurements of this magnetic dip at different positions on the Earth's surface and use these measurements to accurately calculate the exact position of the magnetic poles. These poles are not the same as the geographic poles. In fact, the magnetic poles do not remain in a fixed position but change continually. In 2004, the magnetic pole in the Northern Hemisphere was estimated to be at 82,3 degrees north, 113,4 degrees west. And the magnetic pole at the Southern Hemisphere was estimated to be at 63,5 degrees south and 138 degrees east. These magnetic poles experience both gradual and dramatic changes. Geologists have found rock samples that show pieces of magnetite pointing in different alignments. This is evidence that the magnetic field of the Earth has been reversed many times in the past. Some are even predicting that another reversal is in fact overdue. So far, we have established the direction of the Earth's magnetic field and the position of the poles. Well, that's something to think about. The geographic north is actually a magnetic south. Now that we have investigated the direction of the field and the position of the magnetic field, let's look at the shape of the Earth's magnetic field. When the idea of comparing the Earth to a bar magnet was first published, people thought that the Earth's magnetic field was very similar to a bar magnet. But today we recognize that this magnetic field is not symmetrical like an ordinary bar magnet. Our journey into space has helped us understand more about the complex nature of the systems that sustain life on Earth. One of these systems is the Earth's magnetic field. Although the Sun provides us with energy to support life, many high-energy charged particles stream towards Earth every second. This stream of particles is called the solar wind. The solar wind would harm all life forms if it were to strike Earth. Fortunately, we have a special shield to protect us, our magnetic field. Magnetic fields have effects on magnetic materials, but they can also deflect the direction of moving charged particles. When the solar wind hits Earth's magnetic field, all the charged particles are deflected away from the Earth, 
However, the magnetic field on the side of the Earth facing the Sun is squashed, while the other side is drawn out into a long tail reaching more than 300,000 kilometers into space. Some charged particles do penetrate the outer field, but are trapped in a region of the magnetic field closer to the Earth. These particles are deflected towards the poles where they excite the gases of the atmosphere. The gases absorb energy from these particles, but then release the energy in the form of light. This spectacular display of strange light found in both the Arctic and Antarctic regions is called aurora. I hope you can see that the Earth's magnetic field is not simply an interesting phenomena, but it is in fact essential for life on Earth. I hope you found that interesting and that you now know more about the Earth's magnetic field and about how it affects us on Earth. That brings us to the end of our lesson. Have a look at more videos on our website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Also try the tasks related to the topic in the task video. Goodbye.